Do we have like a sequence we're going to do here coming out of it? Like flyovers and whatever and this and that and talking about all that crap? Welcome back to Major League Pickleball Dallas by Margaritaville. The Brooklyn Aces take the stage next against the Columbus Sliders. Michelle McMahon and Adam Stone in the booth with you. Thrilled to bring you the action today. The Brooklyn Aces came out of Group C with Miami, Dallas, Utah, and Brooklyn. The Columbus Sliders survived their group after an early meeting with D.C. They also took down Bay Area and the bouncers to get to this point as we get you set for the first game of the match. Here is how the numbers shake out, Adam. A perfect 50-50 split. Who are you putting your money on in this one? You know what? I'm going to go Aces. Okay. I'm going to go Aces. We got three very quality veterans on the Aces, and then you have the swag and the talent of the young buck, Hayden Patrick Quinn. I'm putting my money on Brooklyn. Of course, the storyline for Columbus, one of them anyway, Megan Dazon, a staple of this team. But Megan Fudge stepping in for an injured Maggie Brasha on display. They also have J.W. Johnson, one of the best in the world, playing with Colin Johns, and they will be destined in this one. What are you most looking forward to with watching Columbus? Yeah, so for Columbus sliders, I am going to say the mixed doubles play of Colin Johns, the right side rocking men's. Can he change roles and be that alpha for mixed doubles? And of course, Megan Fudge filling in for Maggie Brasha. She is going to have to play big, and I have seen her do it on a number of occasions. Well, in Atlanta, Megan Dazan was out for the sliders, so they've never had a full roster here so far in the season. Let's get now to the Brooklyn Aces, Andrea Coop and Catherine Parento on the stage there. Tyler Loon and Hayden Patrick went suiting up together as well. What's the question for you here with the Aces? Well, and I, and I mentioned that Hayden Patrick went has the swag and he's the younger player, but I'm going to talk about the three veterans. You cannot find three more veteran players in the game of pickleball than Catherine Parento, Tyler Loon, and Andrea Coop. They are going to be solid. They are not going to make poor decisions or make loose errors, and I expect those veterans to play big on this big stage. Moments away from first serve, and while we get you there, let's take a look at the bracket. This is the first of two quarterfinal matchups on championship court. Number three against number five on the lower half of the bracket. On top, it's the Miami Pickleball Club and the one and two Chicago Slice. It's the Ben John effect. How does he make to make it to knockout rounds having that kind of, uh, you know, situation? I'm literally kind of <laughs> upset about it. I, I mean, I've seen it too many times on the court and, and uh, regular tour tournaments, and now here at MLP, he finally <laughs> doesn't play his best and squeezes through to the postseason, just <laughs> rather annoying, Michelle. Uh, he's got good pickleball karma as we get you out to the women's doubles matchup to lead us off in this one. Once we get to the knockout rounds, which we are in, we will only play up to the third game. That's three out of five. If they win three right out of the gate, that's where we will end. Games are to 21, rally scoring, win by two. There's a good look. And Andrea Coop, she is playing with Cap and Parento, two staples on the professional tour. They've been around for a long time. What do you like about their dynamic early? Oh, definitely. So solid, so smart, very high-end tennis backgrounds. They've been in big spots throughout their sporting career. And Andrea Coop, she did a handful of months ago have a slight injury. She took a few tournaments off, and she even mentioned that some of her confidence was a little dipped after that. Can she refine her former form? Mm. and play big like she has in so many of these events. You've dealt with that before as a player with injury. What's the, the key to bouncing back in that way? Or I guess what's the struggle? What's some insight into what that feels like? Well, first off, what you have to do is actually do re rehab. I did not do that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, it was really before is. the days that this is a real full-time yes, job. Yes, but I think that this is really a big factor. A lot of people think that injuries are 100% physical. That is not the case. There is a lot of mental factor going into that, not just mental because 
because of the injury, but also your play as well. You've you've halted your play. You haven't played for a couple months. You don't have those touches and those feel that you're looking for. So very mental aspect in the uh, injury department as well as physical. Catherine Parento will start us off playing the right with Andrea Coop. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I would say that team is relatively interchangeable between mm -hmm. Coop and Parento. Very versatile, played plenty of pickleball on both sides. So we'll see if possibly they run into some adversity, if they could make a switch. But uh, I am fine with this starting arrangement. A 54% edge going to the head-to-head -head in this one goes in favor of Parento and Andrea Coop. Megan Fudge back to serve, stepping in for the injured Maggie Brasha. What an opportunity for Fudge. Originally from Germany, former Division I tennis player at the University of Illinois. Husband Ryler DeHart, we just saw in moments ago. Challenger final. Here we go, first serve. Yeah, and Megan Fudge has great athleticism, great digs from the back of the court and the midcourt, but she occasionally has issues getting her third and fifth shots down. Set. And yeah, I expect, of course, we're going to have some dinking and some point construction, but I expect the ladies to let it fly throughout this match. That's why we love women's devils. Ain't that the truth? Fudge. Yeah, that's two attacks now from Andrea Coop straight ahead. One out of the air, one off of the bounce. Expect Megan Fudge to be sliding to her right to counterattack with her backhand. Long for Dazon. Yeah, Dazon on that. Often when that ball is coming cross court at you, occasionally you do get too big with your swing. You got to keep it compact and get that ball down. the key to doing that, getting the ball down. Yeah, it's, it's just the short swing, so not having that big back swing. So if you take that paddle too far back, often it throws off your timing. Keep it compact and down, that is the key. Scrapping for Megan Fudge. Great mover. Four, two. A lot of balls early to Andrea Coop. Of course, at 4 3 very early in the match, but haven't been able to call Catherine Parento's name yet. another target in her direction. Yeah, that's right, especially Andrea occasionally late getting in to the kitchen line after return, after a good deep serve. Third shot drive, a great play. Ooh, that is disgusting right there. That was not a miss hit. That was a low two-handed backhand attack floating and dropping on the baseline. Great touch and feel from Andrea Coop. Pressure from Megan Design. We know what she's capable of offensively. Yeah, I would say on court, absolutely Megan Design has the most raw power. Coop coming to life. Well, it was a nice adjustment for her. I mentioned she was a bit late on that previous get to the kitchen that time, right where she needed to be. Yeah, you, you 
see those downy soft hands though from Catherine Parinto. <laughs> we haven't called her name at all and she just digs a block from her shoe tops and puts it right in the kitchen. Dazan is so good on the second ball. So if she can start the fire in just an average way, she is very quality on the second, third, and, and possibly fourth shots. So look for those combinations to be a big part of her game. Okay. <laughs> there we go, Megan. Thank you. Point and case. <laughs> Megan Dazan making Adam look good here in the booth. What a finish. Two point lead for Columbus. Owned by David Cass and Doug Oldman. New ball will be selected. Yeah, it's such a nice luxury for Dazan to be to have that put away power. There's so many ladies that are just incredible at the initial speed ups, but have trouble finishing that ball, especially with the athleticism and defensive ability of some of these ladies now. I like the drive for Megan Fudge. Couldn't get it over, but I think it is the right shot selection. Yeah. Megan Dazan, another put away chance. Yeah, it's a really good complimentary pickleball there. Both shifting, I believe Megan Fudge was on uh, Megan Dazan's side and vice versa throughout that point. So moving together seamlessly at the kitchen early. Think about switching Parento and Coop with Coop seeing majority of the balls right now. Yeah, definitely. And Andrea Coop is more comfortable on the left with her backhand dink than her forehand dink. So I would expect the score would need to get pretty lopsided for that switch, even though they are both capable on each side. But then is it Parento less of a factor? In this one, playing that right? Yes. So Abs why would it, why would you protect that weapon versus the other? My question. It's a big difference between the two dinks. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's just how comfortable Coop is. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that happens a lot of times in pickleball, where there is a situation where someone is getting targeted so you put them in their most comfortable spot because they are receiving 70, 80% of the balls. And of course, they're it, not everything, it can't be all positive. There has mm -hmm. to be a pitfall or two, and that pitfall is Catherine not quite being able to get, uh, impart her will, if, if you will. Uh, so <laughs> I, I think that that is the situation we're in, and I'm gonna stick with it. Uh, we're gonna have to get a five, six, maybe even more uh, point deficit for the aces to swap sides. Columbus gets to 11 first. We'll change ends. An 11-8 lead for Megan Dazan and Megan Fudge. And one nuance about Major League Pickleball is you have to come together with new partners, especially last minute for Megan Dazan. I'm sure she was training a bit with Maggie coming into the event. So how hard is it to adjust to a new partner right out of the gate in the in next tournament? Extremely hard and really tough. You said it. They haven't had their full squad for either of these two tournaments, MLP Atlanta here in Dallas. So definitely a big factor, but Megan Fudge, pretty solid early on, and she's just not being a passive right side. She is mixing in speed ups and aggressive play from that right side, and of course the soft stuff as well. Any adjustments you expect to see on the side of the Brooklyn Aces? I don't think so. I expect Andrea Coop. She is not going to completely grind out dinks. I expect her hit a couple dinks and speed up. That is where she is most comfortable, and I expect it to continue. And some real nice positive talk there from Coop over to Catherine Parento. Locked eyes for a while, saying this is our time. Let's get off to a quick start after the end change. Gimme for Megan Dazan. 
<laughs> yes, phenomenal point. And talk about a ridiculous get from Catherine Parento early on. But I love the combination from the sliders. A nice setup, jamming up Coop for Megan Fudge. Oh. Megan Dazan got what she wanted, and you know she's going to make 19 out of 20 of those, so no big deal. a lot. Megan Fudge playing great right now. See Andrea Coop, she, she will go to the two-handed backhand dink with topspin and take that second hand off and go with slice as well. Here's the power of Andrea Coop. Yeah, nice put away power from Andrea. Yeah, it's, it's not easy when you have the movement of fudge and the length of design. So, to find a spot on the court where neither one can touch it is pinpoint accuracy from Coop. Nothing Parento can do about that. One of the best defensive players in the game. Yeah, that's that's the that's the net tape. Catherine Parento, you said it best defensive, some of the best hands, and still looks silly when it clips the tape. For Coop, just missed it. Yeah, I do think she had a window, but she, I think she pushed it a little bit more than getting underneath and getting top spin. So that hint of side spin pushing the ball wide. 15, 11. Wide for Coop, looking to find her game and her confidence. That's right, dropped the shoulders right away after that missed and said time out. Very good time to stop the action as. The lead has increased to five. Yeah, so how would you advise Coop at this point? You know you're the target in this situation. I, I, I think a switch now could be a good option. At the end change, I, I think it was just a little too tight. It was just a point or two here or there, but now it's, it's, it's reached five, and, and we have uh, the Columbus sliders pretty comfortable in the patterns and the situations that are going on. I think it's a reasonable time to switch. We'll see what they come up with. We see Athena Truyo. Catherine's partner over there giving her some really nice tips. She has a great pickleball mind and a nice asset on the bench for the aces. Courtney Johnson, our lead referee for this first quarterfinal, the first of two. We've got Ben Johns waiting in the wings. Let's take the stage next. The Chicago Slice. Didn't look like they uh, were going to advance. Catherine Prento walking to the referee. There we go. That is the switchery All route right. to let them know that they are going to change sides. I was kind of banking on that earlier to me. Catherine Parento's the ability to take over the match. Why not let her be free on the left, right? We were, we were both on it. You yeah. brought it up, and I said, if the lead gets to four or five. So yeah. look at us. Look at us, Michelle. Come on. Let's go. We'll see how that changes the complexion here as Megan Fudge looks to continue their run five points away. But then you switch sides, now you've got to regain your rhythm on a different side, which can be a challenge. Yeah, the shots are coming out you from a completely different angle. Coop gets one. 
Yeah, nice job of handling that first ball for Megan Duzon, which very quality shot. Duzon losing a bit of balance on that last. Long for Duzon. And Andrea Coop has a very good misdirect, meaning when Megan Fudge is dinking to her, pushing that forehand straight ahead as an attack at the player in front of her. Oh. Catherine Parento on the run, crashing middle. Here we go. That is just not an option from the right. Exactly. What took them so long? <laughs> Looking, Catherine Parento on the opposing side goes cross court on Dazan. Now a two point game. 15, 17. Dazan steps in and gets it right back. Yeah, Megan Fudge, really quality slides to her right to counter with the backhand on a number of occasions throughout this match. Great counter attacking from her. Mix in the lob. And a bit of some trouble, Coop. Back to serve. 16, 18. Yeah. Nice job switching her spot for Megan Dazon. Often when she had stepped to her left to hit a forehand dink, she's pushing that inside out as an angle. This time goes middle, catching Parento off guard. spin on that drop from Megan Fudge. When Andrea Coop was unable to take it out of the air, it hits the court and takes off. Game sealed by Columbus. A crucial one nothing lead on the Brooklyn Aces, Megan Dazan and Megan Fudge. Yeah, I'm not going to call it a big upset, but that is definitely an upset in my opinion. Great play throughout that match from the sliders. They deserved that win. Up next, it's men's doubles. Tyler Lug and Hayden Patrickwin with all the pressure on their side now as they face off against one of the best in the world, J.W. Johnson and his partner Colin Johns. Coming up next.
active sweat is your body's natural way of cooling itself down. Then condensation is a beer's natural way of saying, drink me. Michelob Ultra, superior light beer. The Columbus Liners on top in this one, one nothing over the Brooklyn Aces. It was a perfect 50-50 split with win probability. So now the responsibility falls on the gentlemen. Tyler Lung and Hayden Patrickwin squaring off against J.W. Johnson and Colin Johns, one of the best resetters in the men's game. So it would seem like the odds are in favor of the sliders in this one. I believe so. <laughs> and but I am going to have a little something to say at Big H Hayden Patrick when I'm not going to he's definitely not a better overall player than J.W. Johnson. But I believe that Hayden has the most offense of any player on the court. Mm, it's a bold statement. Oh, told you, oh. told you. <laughs> not exactly how we had it drawn up, but uh, he'll take it. And you know who does not like the let cords. Uh -uh. And rattled early, Colin Johns. <laughs> yeah, I told you, all, all the times I've lost to Colin. <laughs> yeah, you just see me the last 10 points just trying to hit let cords to, to get him upset mentally. <laughs> Snipe from Colin Jacks. Yeah, and and the thing is, JW Johnson, incredible player, but you could see Colin pull more triggers with JW than his brother Ben. Yeah. Okay, Hayden Patrick Quinn, is that what you meant at the top of the show? Yeah. With the uh, offense? Yeah, reasonable angle <laughs> angle there. But you see him hopping the corner, one-handed backhand angle, and I know he caught the tape on the other one, but a low two-handed backhand roll at Colin Johns. He really, he, yeah, he's got he's got all the tools in the toolbox. Can he use them at the right time, Michelle? 18 years old, Hayden Patrick Quinn. Two, three. See how quick the wrist and forearm of J.W. Johnson is. I know he caught the tape with that ball. A lot of pace and spin on that with no backswing. Tyler Loom showing some early frustration. Not a player that makes too many soft errors. reaching in yeah, and he will also uh, one of those players that has more of a poke than a roll so look for him to occasionally reach in with that one-handed backhand and punch it for an offensive shot yeah. wow, Hayden Patrick Green, such quick on his attack yeah he also along with JW Johnson creates incredible amount of spin and pace with no backswing What a play from Loom, though. That's right. The Ernie King, the original. He was good at it then. He's good at it now. You cannot put that ball there on Tyler Loom. Patrick Quinn punches it to the corner. Normally, it, it's early. Normally, there's a finger wag after that one. He just casually walked back to the baseline. He'll build. He's building, Michelle. He's building. <laughs> Slow build. going in favor of the sliders. The aces on top by four. Eight, four. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, 
can't remember the last time I saw a backhand roll dink winner past J.W. Johnson. Hayden Patrick went well played. Patrick, the only player on court without an extensive tennis background. He is a baseball guy, and he has gotten himself to the highest level of the game. Impressive. He's shown his takeover ability there. And it's just, I mean, you often see takeover ability from the left side from someone with a wingspan or a large frame. Right. So the ability that Hayden can do it with a slider frame is just incredible. The Brooklyn Aces, 11-6 for the end change. A dominant start for them. Hayden Patrickwin, a huge reason why. What's unique about his skill set? You talked about his slight frame, but what is it then somebody of his caliber that he can make these kind of plays. Yeah, and, and see, I mean, I can create a little bit of power on my shots, but I need a swing. I need a back swing. I don't have the strength in the wrist and the forearm that some of these players do. And Hayden Patrickwin, just so good. And I mentioned J.W. Johnson as well. So when you don't have the back swing, not only is he at the pace or the spin, you can't read it as an opponent. So there's multiple wrinkles to why his offense is so good, and I believe those are three of them right there. But yeah, this is this is a bit surprising for me. Uh, J.W. Johnson seems a bit off over from the left, and 11-6 uh, is a pretty commanding lead given this particular matchup. Fusion in the middle off of a very soft dink. Got to get it switched, situated. slide to his right. He can use two hands or one, this time one-handed, and right down at the feet of his opponents through the middle. He welcomes any speed up in his direction. Bates you, almost. J.W. Johnson, back to serve, down three. What's not going well right now for the sliders up to this point? Or just falling short in your eyes. Catching the hip of J.W. Johnson. Really, I think right now for me, it's the cleanliness of play from J.W. from the left side that is the biggest factor. He's not always known as a dominant offensive player, but he rarely makes loose errors, and his counterattacks are incredible. He's not showing that early or midway through this match. Attack out of the air for Colin Johns. Fancy footwork at the kitchen line from Hayden Patrickwin as well. Out wide to his left, back to the middle to cover. Very nice play. Tyler Loon 
finishes. Yeah, and I think that's probably one of the best parts of Tyler Loom's game. He isn't necessarily known for his offense, but when his partner speeds up, Tyler Loom often finishes the point, and that's what we saw right there. Yeah, good time for a timeout for the sliders is, you know, I think some of the calmness of JW and Colin helps them. But at the same time, when you get in a bit of a hole or things aren't working uh, as well as you would like, it is tough to pull out of that with, with maybe a little bit of lack of energy. So it, it is one of those back and forth things, as I said, as I love to say, Michelle, yeah. you know, it's never all perfect, but I do believe it helps and hurts them in certain situations. It's almost like they need a fire and ice situation and there's that calm demeanor. To your point, can be a challenge to get any sort of boost on your side, energetically speaking. Yeah, they're having a very extended conversation, and it was, yeah, saying something, some nodding. So they, they seem to be on the same page here. Let's see what they come up with after the timeout. from Colin Johns and a good response out of the break. Yeah, nice deception from Colin. He's mixed it up going line and at the right hip of Hayden Patrickwin. Hayden late on the two-handed backhand counter there. Yeah. Tyler Loom, the Ernie King himself. That's right, and he is in the air when he slaps that ball. Looked relatively simple on the TV. It is not, I promise you. Great balance from him. This dink from Hayden Patrickwin. And also it's nice when you have, we talked about Hayden on the left, it shrinks the court. So it forces the ball to Hayden and it also allows him to not have to cover as much court when his right side partner is a great earner. Nice extended exchange from the fellas. I think all the players thought that was over one or two times before it actually was. Yeah, you take it like a man. It's almost like he puffed his chest out just to get hit by the ball. So hit me. Hit me. <laughs> well, he did. <laughs> Slight frame. Took it like a champ. Yep. how they have to defend it. I like that from the Columbus sliders. Colin fading to the right, JW in the middle with the forehand, just have to come up with that one. Clean finish. Oh no, they called it long. I believe it's so long. I didn't see it land from our vantage point, but yes. So yeah, game point for the Brooklyn Aces. Yeah. And another miss for JW. JW Johnson means the Brooklyn Aces tie it up one game apiece. That is a shocking scoreline in men's doubles, 21-13. Yeah, and, and it really is two, two upset, slight upsets in my opinion, though. That was a good opportunity to go 2-0. You got to give the Aces credit for playing big. Catherine Parento will be back in the mix in mixed doubles, and we will be right back to bring you the third game of the action here in this quarterfinal match. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. 
They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. And I said, Saturday, no one's here. Like, are you getting this? You get, you know? So if he wants the end, boy, water doesn't, doesn't boy. have to be boring. Turn it up with Circle. With over 40 delicious flavors and a dial that controls your intensity, Circle starts a party for your taste buds. No sugar, no calories, and no artificial flavors. Just good times. Circle, it's your water, your way. Try Circle at drinkcircle.com. On a mixed doubles we go. Game three in this matchup between the Columbus Sliders and the Brooklyn Aces. It'll be Andrea Coop and Hayden Patrickwin taking on Megan Fudge and Colin Johns. Early impressions of this matchup, Adam. Well, I said pick to click yeah. before the match started. Mm -hmm. Colin Johns yes. mixed doubles game. He so did. he has a nice matchup here. Can he impose his will, get his team a W? Because the Aces have their anchor and Tyler Lung and Catherine Parento coming up next. So this is a huge match for the Columbus Sliders. Can they start quick? and put some pressure on the aces. This is best three out of five if we must go to a dream breaker. Winner of this one will wake up early at 8 a.m. for the semifinal. Here we go. Hayden Patrickwin, such a quick release at yeah, wrist. That's right, and it's from a pretty low position and three feet inside the baseline. That is just a testament to the amount of spin he's getting on that ball. can take over a match. Here he is. Yeah, great play. Three shot exchange. Lots of power and four or five feet off the kitchen line too. Nice step over from Colin Johns. Hitting a nice inside out forehand on the back hip of Hayden. Snipes the middle. Yeah, that's twice now. Pretty much a carbon copy. And let's be clear, Megan Fudge's dink was not bad. So great offense from Hayden to create something from almost nothing. Forced another error that time. He can make almost any shot a weapon, it seems, to your point. And oh my, Colin Johns getting the crowd on their feet for that ATP. Yeah, Almost a winner. That's right. Hasn't hit a lot of left sided ATPs in his career, but that one was a gosh darn beauty. <laughs> Keep that one for the highlight reel. Ball is wide, according to Colin Johns. Nice job finding the middle for Megan Fudge as Hayden Patrick went overextended and was looking to move back into position. She found the perfect spot up the middle. 4-2 lead for the Aces. Yeah. Hands battle won by Colin Johns. And that
That is the most fire I have seen for Colin in quite a while. Letting Hayden Patrick Quinn know he loves winning that hands battle. Oh, 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 oh. oh man, that's a nice firefight too. Colin had a really good look at that last ball. One out of two ain't bad though. Yeah, really nice shot there from Colin. And both fellas having some pretty quality movement at the kitchen line, back and forth, covering their position behind them and being a presence in the open court. Colin Johns trying to call off Megan Fudge, but she's trying to pad her stats. She wants the winner and she got it. <laughs> Some of these faces and reactions from Colin are too good right now. It means more. When you, when you don't give a lot usually, and then you give a reaction, it just means a little bit more. Nice hands from Megan Fudge. Pretty good flip right at her hip, and she dug out of it. Hayden can't come up with the next ball. He'll flip at the hip. <laughs> it's a quality combination there. So much firepower from that little frame of Hayden Patrickwin. Loose arm. Loose arm is right. 12 year baseball background. Seems to translate nicely. All is long. Yeah, I would say baseball is the number one non-racket paddle sport to come from. So, yeah. uh, you know, we have some badminton. Of course, we have tennis and, and some ping pong as well. But baseball is pretty high up there, Michelle. And eye coordination. Yeah, they're used to tracking the ball at high speeds. Of course, the hand-eye coordination, like you mentioned. A lot of those skill sets uh, transition over nicely. Job from Megan Fudge, grinding out some cross court dinks and forcing Coop into a questionable decision. We'll just label it that. Wow, the defense of Colin Johns is so good, but Hayden Patrick Quinn does one better. That's right, you can see you can just see how whippy it is. It's just, it just starts from nothing, and then by the time he is contacting the ball, the paddle head speed is high end. Yeah. A little ambitious again there from Andrea Coop. Trying to attack Fudge cross court, and then a couple points later trying to go back behind Colin Johns. No success though. Yep, and that is one of the issues as being a dominant left side player in mixed doubles. I ran across this myself, is you can put the pressure on in the middle. It's just so tough to cover your back as well. And that's what we saw uh, for Hayden Patrick when, who hit a great forehand from the middle of the court. But that Colin Johns counter just slips right past him on the backside. Well, if Columbus could pull a win here in this mixed doubles, I think J.W. Johnson be thrilled with that chance to clean up waiting on the wings, although he will have a matchup with Catherine Parento 
Yeah, I talked about how, you know, the anchor, Loong and Catherine Parento, and then you look over at their opponents, J.W. Johnson and Megan Dazon, and, you know, maybe not quite the anchor that we thought, as that is a, is a pretty even matchup. Colin Johns discussing some key tactics with Megan Fudge. Yeah, you get a... You get a player, you get a coach, you get a GM, you get it all there <laughs> with, with the Johns brothers. So it's, it's nice and, and probably an understated aspect of what they bring to the team format. Yeah, really impressive stuff. I'm not, I'm not, the shots are fine, They're, the shots are great, but I'm more impressed with his movement at the kitchen line and his ability to get in front of Coop and create offense. Patrick, when you're saying? Yes, exactly, and I know I, know I mentioned it's tough to cover all and behind you, but he's doing a, a phenomenal job with, you know, just not the wingspan of some of the other players. game. Oh, what a flick from Hayden. Patrick Quinn down the line, lofted it up. Yeah, unbelievable. Coop had one of those in women's doubles, and now Hayden Patrick Quinn. I always say anyone can hit a winner hard. Not many people can hit a winner soft, and that was <laughs> An incredible pull from a very tough position for Big H. Coop lined up and loaded on Colin Johns. Yeah, nice play from her and good read as the sliders are looking to keep Hayden ba Patrick went back at the baseline and she picked it off. Clip the tape, but either way, some really nice inside out two-handed backhands, not only uh, uh, in this match, but in women's as well for Megan Fudge. Yeah. Hayden Patrick Quinn steps in, takes over the point. Yeah, nice combination. Hard to keep it away from him. It is. That initial counter is so important because if you don't put a good swing on it or put it in a good spot, even if it's multiple shots later, you're in a very tough spot. <laughs> Hayden Patrick win. unbelievable hands. Brooklyn Aces lost to Miami early in the tournament, beat Utah Friday in a dream breaker, and Dallas this afternoon. They were almost out of it, Adam. Had they not beaten Dallas, would have been out of it. Who looked great on Friday, so I believe the way they were playing, uh, the Aces, did not. I did not see the match, but had to play huge to win that match and earn this berth in postseason. one through. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and call that corner pocket for Colin Johns. Hayden Patrick Quinn not even making a motion to counterattack that great deception from Colin. point that earned it. That's right. I talked about Hayden's movement at the kitchen line. Colin Johns as well. He was back and forth several times throughout that point before he found the finishing ball. 15, 15. Has a lot of patience to wait you out, Colin Johns. Uh-oh. Jones 
buries it, ties it up. Great point, some nice precise dinking from the ladies to keep the fellas not involved in the heart of that point. And once again, Andrea Coop pulling the trigger and Colin Johns up to the task. from Colin too. Hayden couldn't hit that counter any harder, but unfortunately clips the tape and then changes trajectory and goes wide. He welcomed the counter too, Johns. Seemed like he was there. Patrick Quinn will take it back. of Aiden Patrick Quinn. Great play for Megan Fudge. Probably, I don't know, 20-25 dinks throughout a variety of points, and she waits for the perfect time to pull the trigger. Great patience from her, not forcing anything and finding the right time. Sliders on top by one. Yeah, big dig at Collins' feet after a nice counterattack from Andrea Coop. lead of the game. And I think I saw a Colin John's two-handed forehand reset in the middle of all of that. Incredible hands from Colin, and I was, I certainly wasn't calling him out, but I was hoping he would play big and mix doubles, and he is absolutely doing so. Yeah, this is definitely inviting him to step up in that way for sure. What a remarkable comeback that would be for the sliders and for this mixed doubles team to pull through. Megan Fudge, of course, stepping in for Maggie Brasha, I believe is on the sideline for that team right now. Oh yeah, there she is. It's always, it's always nice to just have someone else in your corner, you know? A player, a fan, a, a whatever, all of, these, all of these teams have quality uh, coaches, general managers, and fans, and you really lo love to see the backing that they're getting and the support that they're getting out on the court. A bit overdue, Adam, but congratulations publicly on your SoCal Heart Eights back-to-back -back championship, my friend. You dropped it well. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I will take 1% of 1% of the credit. <laughs> the players play, and they want it on the court for us. Congratulations to my squad. Nick, credit you for being here in the booth while your team is out celebrating the win. <laughs> Literally next to us at the bar, but it's fine. Meanwhile, Columbus, two away. Into the net goes Andrea Coop, the Columbus Sliners on the verge of an upset. A couple times now, the backspin of Megan Fudge, a couple drops and a couple dinks that has given the Aces trouble. everything at the sliders. That's right, relentless aggression from Hayden Patrickwin. You have to win on your serve, 2018. Game point number two for Columbus. Nice job on Megan Fudge handling that cross-court attack from Coop. Yeah. Fudge 
goes into the net. A heavy gust of wind just picked up a moment ago here in Dallas. Hayden Patrick Quinn will look to tie it here. Ball is out. Columbus with game point number three. Oh, she had a sliver too. Colin was leaning to his right to hopefully pick something off in the middle. Tough break for Coop as she sails it a couple inches long. just absolutely huge to tie it up. We have a fresh match. situation you could you can almost feel the panic of Hayden Patrick and get out of there get out of there he <laughs> couldn't do it 21 20 went on your serve oh just long for fudge 21 all rally scoring continues both sides you just have to win on your serve and he had the glory, but I tell you what, this cross-court dinking of Megan Fudge is really impressive. Not only is she not giving Coop much to work with, she is keeping the ball away from Hayden Patrick win, and she wasn't quite doing that in the first half of the match. Megan Fudge's husband <laughs> right next to us here in the booth, almost having a hernia watching this one. <laughs> it's easier to play, isn't it, Ryler? Easier to play for sure. Watching is tough, I just did it as well. <laughs> Frisco Panda's back on the map. It is cool to see these connections, though, in pickleball. You have some significant others, quite a few dynamic brother-sister duos. It is a family affair at the pro level and throughout the amateur ranks. That's why we love this sport so much. All right, X Factor, final few points. What is it, both sides? No, it's, it, this is full-fledged execution. There, it, it's, there's not a lot of X's and O's going on. They have a pattern. They have a game plan that they came into this match. You maybe make some tweaks in the heart of the match, but it is who wants it, who's going to play big, who is mentally locked in for these last couple minutes. And who can handle the pressure? Game point number four for Columbus. Johns and Megan Fudge get it done against Andrea Coop and hated Patrick Quinn. How did they do it, Adam Stone? That was incredible. Exactly what I was looking for from Colin Johns in such an amazing role as a supporting player, picking her spots for offense, but being a rock with her consistency from the right side, Megan Fudge, they earned that win. A happy looking Maggie Brasha watching on as Megan Fudge steps in for her and executed a must win situation for Columbus and they could close it out here in four and we will discuss the X Factor in this next mixed doubles matchup after the break. Match point, it's all up to me. Nothing can get in my way. And when they ask, what are you gonna do next? I'll say I'm going. <laughs> We're going 
go to Margaritaville too. Visit margaritavilleresorts.com. My name is Itamar, and this is the story of how I got my life back. In college, I injured my back swimming and pain became so bad that I couldn't function. Treatment was solely focused on my lower back. I was worried that I was never gonna get better. When I found HSS, it felt like I had found the cure to my pain. My doctor asked about my hips as opposed to every other doctor that only asked about my back. HSS changed and saved my life. Innovation is our specialty. Winning is his. Zane Navratil has won more than 40 pro gold medals in back-to-back -back Major League Pickleball titles. One of Pickleball's most iconic and decorated athletes teamed up with our world-class engineers with one goal in mind. Build a paddle that can dominate. The Zane Navratil Signature Paddle. Designed for champions by champions. Available now. Pro XR Pickleball. Innovation you can handle. Megan Dazan and J.W. Johnson could close it out for the Columbus Sliders. It was a perfect 50-50 split, probability-wise, between these two. But Catherine Parento and the lefty Tyler Loom changes, changes the complexity of this one with a lefty forehand. It's all in the middle on their side. So what are we looking for? Well, Catherine and Tyler Loom have played quite a few tournaments together now. It was a couple years ago, but they're very comfortable. And I talked about how many big spots they've been in, how consistent their play is. But I'm going to make a call right here, oh, Michelle. Okay. And I see... James Walter Johnson <laughs> taking over this match and being the big man on the left side with that big forehand in the middle. I'm calling it right here. Sliders taking this thing 3-1. Catherine Parento and Tyler Loon have a couple of MLP titles to their name. Tyler Loon won San Clemente and Daytona with Seattle last season. And Catherine Parento won Mesa with the LA Mad Drops and uh, the season one super final as well. Oh man, so I, I took the other team against all those mm -hmm. accolades? Oh, okay, all right. I'm just sticking with give it. Them, just to give them a little bit of a boost. I'm sticking with it, partner. Okay, I like it. Megan is on to start over to Tyler Lou. Oh boy, wow, blown up, hello. <laughs> Tyler Loom heard you too, Adam. <laughs> Can't go there. <laughs> the no go zone. Yeah. Megan Dazan, effortless power. Just a little roll reversal. The setup from JW and the finish from Dazan. She gave it the left leg kick to try to coax it over. It didn't work, though. <laughs> Unfortunately, it rarely does. at the feet of Tyler Loom. Oh, it's the perfect decision. I think if she tries to hit power through the middle, she's in big trouble. So great decision and shot selection for Megan. Yeah. Loom packing some power on that lefty. Yeah, I talked about his put away power and his clean up ability. It might be the number one best part of his game. on looking for a little half Ernie jumping the corner of the kitchen. Didn't quite have her feet underneath her and makes the air into the net. Yeah. 
Oh, former teammates going at it. Tyler Lewing and Megan Dazan. Yeah, and there's that uh, kind of backhand poke that I talked about in men's doubles with Tyler Lung. Not a lot of spin, but it does get on you very quickly. And we saw him jam up Megan Dazan right there. And have to give credit to Megan Dazan as well. She was on that same Seattle team as Tyler Lung. The titles in San Clemente and Daytona, as well as the MVP award in Daytona. Dazan lined up on the line drive. Three, five. Nice hands from Megan Dazan, forcing Tyler Loon to reach further than he wanted to. Four serving five early on. Nice spin, back spin and slice from Tyler Lung. Megan Dazan getting a little ahead of herself, moving forward too aggressively to take that ball out of the air. Yeah, that's the ball right there that I would like to see J.W. Johnson hit through. His, t his opponents were coming forward. He decides to go soft and continue to invite them in. Let's put some pressure on the aces. Loon goes wide, was ready for the attack. Columbus trails by three. Two, excuse me. Ladies have had their try at a little half Ernie. Neither one successful. Six, there is the raw power of design. Another miss for J.W. Johnson. Yeah, just a little late getting over to the middle, but that is definitely where he needs to be, and he needs to be aggressive with that shot. Just got to get the court positioning situated. Three in a row for the sliders. 10 to six lead for the aces. Oh, Catherine Parento cornered the angle. An 11 6 lead on the end change for the aces. Yeah, that's, I mean, a beautiful combination from Catherine Parento. She got exactly what she wanted from the initial counterattack and then whipped through that two handed backhand with a ton of force. Nothing JW can do. What's going wrong for Columbus right now? Down five. Really, it's loose airs. I, I uh, you know. Uh, we like to talk X's and O's here, it's fun, but <laughs> you must hit the ball in several times in a row to even deal with the strategery and the strategic play in this game. So you gotta clean that up. That's a couple scoop forehand dinks from JW that didn't make it over, and you have to put yourself in a situation to get some rhythm going before you start specifically going at players or spots. As I mentioned, winner of this one will advance to the semifinal taking place tomorrow at 8 a.m. Central Time. Adam, better go home and get your sleep tonight. Let's get these players. Against the D.C. pickleball team. Yeah, not, not a huge reward for winning this match. This <laughs> D.C. pickleball team is good luck. very good. There you go, J-Dub. Very nice slice there from J.W. Johnson. Build that momentum here, sliders. Make this a match. Yeah. 
Catherine Parento finds the baseline. Yeah, great job from Catherine Parento, who before Dazan even contacts that ball is already moving to her left to look for her Ernie. Great recognition from her. Playing a couple pulls from Catherine Parento, going straight ahead right at Dazan, knowing that she has that big lefty forehand for backup in the middle from Loong. I like her decision to pull triggers in this setup. Nice grind from the sliders. Some quality dinking. Ooh, ATP delivered by JW Johnson. Yeah, silky smooth, never in a hurry. Great slice and backspin. Tyler Loon was in pretty good position to get that, but no shot. dinking for Megan Dazan. I mean, she's just not getting that ball in. She's doing something with it and creates the air from Tyler Loom. Megan Dazan playing very well throughout this match. Two point game now. As the Brooklyn Aces need this game to push a dream breaker. Yeah, and if, if we do happen to get to that dream breaker, mm -hmm. Pretty even matchup. I think it'll be really? an exciting one, absolutely. Because? Oh. Well, I'm just saying the, the quality yeah. of singles play, no one really has a hole on their singles team. Everyone's matched up pretty evenly. So, you know, we're, we're, we're neutral here. We don't want anything specifically to happen, of course. But if we did make it to that dream breaker, it would be a good one. According to the Team Dupers, this matchup is 50-50, up for grabs. for design. She wants that one back. shot from Tyler Loong. A very quality inside out forehand, cross court or to the middle, one of his great weapons. What a play from Megan Dazan, another aggressive dig from her. Yeah, some of those rolls in the forehand side. I mean, Tyler Loong, athletic as, he, as it gets out here and he's having some trouble with it. In, JW finishes. All right, Megan, okay. I'm with it. 13, 13. Yeah. Design for the speed-up attack of Tyler Loon. Absolutely, Megan Dazan. 
last handful of points has been absolutely on fire, and it's not just the soft stuff or the power, it is both. Tyler Loom responds. Yeah, that's a great job by him to be able to counter with the backhand as J.W. Johnson had that left shoulder targeted. Nice job from Tyler Loom protecting, protecting his chest. <laughs> protesting his <laughs> We can add it to the dictionary, why not? Mm -hmm. J.W. Johnson buries it on Parento. A yeah. one-point game continues. Yeah, great job. And we've seen the pattern with Catherine attacking Megan. Lefty forehand of Loon. We see the roll reversal here in J.W. Johnson. Nice finish. Oh, boy. Oh, it's in. I just love listening. As, as Catherine Parento has the fancy footwork, you just hear Lou, go, 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 go. He was, he was very <laughs> excited for her, and she finishes nicely. Oh, my. Take a breather. Megan Dazan, her resets and her drops were on point. Yeah, every, everyone played that point well. Those are the points that we love when they are won and not given, and that's exactly what we had. My goodness, the Brooklyn Aces on top, 17 to 15, looking to keep their playoff hopes alive here against the Sliders, who could turn this around and close it out in four. You put your money on the Aces ahead of the match. Now where do we stand on that still? On the same side? D did I do that, Michelle? You did. Okay, all right, all right. So. Uh, okay, I'm still sticking with it. I'm still I'm There's still a chance I remember correctly. <laughs> Dazan had it. <laughs> Pretty funny reaction for Megan Dazan as well. I mean, first real air she's had in quite a while. Oh no. Oh, oh God. Megan Dazan has taken a blow to the head before this earlier this season. And. She had a concussion for a little bit of time. Um, yeah. We're going to take a timeout. Yeah, that's that's not a 3-5 hitting her in the back of oh, the head no. with his forehand. That's J.W. Johnson. I hope everything's OK. That's a heavy hit. We hope she's OK. Man, second time in one season. Yeah, no. Federico Stocksrude was the one that delivered the blow earlier this year. And so Megan Dazan takes a seat. Oh, man. She's playing so well, too. Yeah, I agree. She's playing amazing. Just one of those yeah, kind gonna... of awkward shots from her opponent where it's not clearly anyone's ball. I don't certainly don't blame JW Johnson. Just just one of those things that the stars aligned for for it to happen. She'll be evaluated on the sideline. I believe it'll be concussion protocol just to make sure that she would be cleared to play beyond this point. Yeah, and when, you, when, when you're dealing with something as serious as a head injury, I mean, you, you have to get clearance. We have medical professionals here for the athletes, so it's, it's 
a little bit out of your hands as it's a very, very serious situation. We're gonna step aside for just a moment uh, while Megan Design continues to be evaluated here on the sidelines. Scary hit to the head at 19-15 in this fourth mixed doubles game. We'll be right back with an update after this. the botanist we always look further, seeing potential where others may not. We sustainably hand forage 22 Isla Botanicals to make a beautifully balanced gin, capturing the essence of our Scottish island home, consciously crafted by our community to be enjoyed by yours. Look further. It's all up to me. Nothing can get in my way. And when they ask, what are you going to do next? I'll say, I'm going. Oh. We're going to Margaritaville. You can go to Margaritaville, too. Visit margaritavilleresorts.com. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. True duper. natural way of cooling itself down then condensation is a beer's natural way of saying drink me Michelob Ultra superior light beer introducing Skechers Pickleball the official footwear of Major League Pickleball they're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed they have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball.
And I said, Saturday? No one's here. Like, are you getting this? You get so if he wants the end, water doesn't, doesn't have to be boring. Anything? Turn it up with Circle. With over 40 delicious flavors and a dial that controls your intensity, Circle starts a party for your taste buds. No sugar, no calories, and no artificial flavors. Just good times. Circle, it's your water, your way. Try Circle at drinkcircle.com. Back to the action, Megan Dazan back on court and seems to be okay for the duration of this mixed doubles match. Definitely a scary situation though, glad she looks okay. So a little update from the sideline. Perfect. They were, the sliders being they, were going to pick up Yana Newell if Megan Dazan was not available to finish this match. And in that case, obviously the strategy being, you lose to the aces, you go to a dream breaker, you pick the best challenger female player available, because the rule stands, if Megan were to go out or at any point after this, if she cannot play, the sliders can then elect to pick any player on the challenger side to replace her. Yes, and pretty, pretty big luxury to have a challenger player that has made Championship Sunday on several PPA events at uh, your disposal. Yeah. So, uh, but yes, th this, I mean, Megan Dazan is definitely number one here. I can't believe it's twice in the same season, the scary situation, but she does look to be okay, at least for the rest of this match, and hopefully moving forward if there were to be a dream breaker. Yeah, and the Brooklyn Aces were not thrilled with that rule because they felt that severely gave them a disadvantage when it came to the Dream Breaker. Yes, I, I would consider Yana Newell a better singles player than Megan Dazan, no question. So that was their gripe on their side. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I definitely get that. So, I, but what are you gonna do? Would you rather win by default? Yeah, like, right, sure, yeah. sure. I don't know, it's...
Anyways, Megan Dazan came back. She said she was good to go. But the call is still out to Yana Newell to be here just in case. Hopefully she wasn't celebrating with an adult beverage after her big win earlier. Because <laughs> Adam would be. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think she. Adam would not be available. Yes, for I would not be available, but I, I think that she's, she's a good gal, so. So we welcome back our MSG audience here. In Major League Pickleball in this fourth mixed doubles game in this match. I'll give you an update after the point. Into the net right away for Megan Dazan. So the update was Megan Dazan left to get evaluated. She came back, said she was okay. Wanted to finish this matchup. JW stepping up big in the middle. Definitely not concussed after those two counter attacks. Megan Dazan, great job to keep her team in this match. It's gotta Game, be. sorry. It's got to be disruptive to your rhythm, though, to jump out, jump back in, game point against you. Yeah, for everyone, really, Michelle. So, of course, Megan Dazan, who, who had that injury, but also all the other three players on the court as well. Another game point for the Aces. And you can see that. We saw a, a missed soft shot from JW and now Tyler Loom after that extended break. Heck of a drop from Megan Dazan. No panic, no rush from the back of the court. Nice job from the sliders. Dazan sends a cannon followed up by J.W. Johnson. It's a one-point game. Yeah, I mean, great shot from J.W., but he had the easy part. That set-up drive from Dazan was world-class. Megan Dazan goes down, comes back, ties it up. That 19-20 point, as I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, so important, all knotted up. 20 all. the better of it. What a battle. Unbelievable point. I absolutely am okay with that attack from J.W. Johnson. Just too good on the counter for Mr. Loon. Just long for Dazan and a heartbreaker for the Columbus Sliders. Wow, what a series of events. Yeah, I tell you what, the last 10 minutes has been pretty wild, Michelle, and the people are gonna get what they want. We got the Dream Breaker coming and we have a very tightly contested one at that. Okay, well, regroup. And so Megan continuing to have discussions on the sideline. Here's the situation at hand to give you an update for our MSG audience with us. Megan Dazan got hit in the head with a paddle of J.W. Johnson. It was a rocket of an arm swing, too. It wasn't a soft play. She went evaluated to the concussion protocol. And the rule here with Major League Pickleball is if she is deemed that she is not able to finish this match with lingering concussion symptoms, the Columbus Sliders can opt to pick up any female player at the challenger level. So here we are in a dream breaker situation. Obviously, the first choice for the Columbus Sliders would be Yana Newell, who was taken to Adam's team, the SoCal Hard Eights. She's oh, wow, Michelle. Warming up now. And 
That's a very big turn of events here on Championship Court. Yeah, there, there is a lot going on right now, Michelle. We have the GM from the Aces and Coop trying to talk to Brooks Wiley. This, I mean, a lot going on. As we welcome you back into the booth, Michelle McMahon alongside Adam Stone. Thrilled to have you back with us. What a wild evening it's been so far. This is just the first of two quarterfinals we have for you here from MLP Dallas, and it's a thriller. I mean, the options for the Brooklyn Aces were to win by default or square off against Yana Newell and the Columbus Sliders, and Megan Dazan, it appears to have maybe eliminated herself from the competition due to that concussion protocol. You can't argue that, right? I mean, it's... It. I mean, it's as clear as day right there. You can see the replay. Um, and how that would work is if she does decide to pull out, she will not be able to come back if they do advance. So she is out for the tournament officially if she is out for this Dream Breaker. Which, if it's truly a concussion, which how could it not be getting rocked in the back of the head with a paddle, you would, you, she needs to rest. Yes. Yeah, this is, it's nothing is worth, you know, jeopardizing your head at this point and it's an unfortunate circumstance but a great point by you Yana Newell would have to continue and what an event it's been for her Yana Newell if you're just joining us won a championship at the challenger level earlier this afternoon with the SoCal Heart Eights Adam Stone in the booth here one of the general managers of the team who drafted Yana Newell yeah and let's be clear I mean she is Right. I mean, she's like the back end of the top 10 and premier for singles. Right. So she is an electric talent on the singles court. Very small in stature, but an incredible amount of power in her paddle. So uh, I expect if she does play, I expect her to play very well. Megan Fudge, also a, a significantly talented singles player. Plays a lot on the APP Tour, wins a lot of titles over there. So here's the situation at hand and, and this is a big deal for the aces too this is a lot for them you know they are moving through a match we have the incident now there's a replacement and there's a little bit of argument if this they're is, not happy yes they're so, not happy with so, these rules and, and i know the, the gm samin down there talking with courtney johnson the head referee so there there is a lot of moving parts and i know i've said that a couple times but it's because it's true, Michelle, and there is a lot going on uh, uh, mentally with these players, uh, not just physically. If you were a GM for the Aces right now, what would your stance be? Would you be upset well, about? Well, of course, I. It's it's not the most ideal situation for my team, but the rules are the rules, and that's why we have uh, these rules in place, and we have, uh, uh, you know, Brooks Wiley, the CEO. You have Courtney Johnson, the head referee. Like I mentioned, they they know it cover to cover. They know what's going on, and uh, you know these type of situations, you just got to go by the book. So with Yana Newell suiting up for the Columbus Sliders, which team would you get the edge to when it comes to the single stream breaker by Toyota Prius, Adam? That honestly could tip them, tip it in their favor. So Megan Dazan, not a poor singles player by any means, but much more known for her doubles chops. So to, to squeeze in Yana Newell onto this already very competent singles team, I do believe on paper that gives uh, the sliders a slight edge. We got an official word that Yana Newell is in. So no. That we, we haven't gotten the official verdict. She popped out and warmed up, and now she's back on the sidelines, kind of chatting with the rest of the slider squad. So uh, we are definitely eagerly awaiting an update. Wiley, the commissioner of Major League Pickleball, talking things over with Courtney Johnson. 
This is a unique circumstance, an unforeseen circumstance. Now Megan Dazan is warming up on the corner. And we have Colin Johns down here hitting left-handed forehands. <laughs> Once again, a lot going on at NLP. Oh boy, we will give you the official update as soon as we have it. This is crazy stuff. That's a good look at Megan Fudge from the University of Illinois tennis standout. Yeah, and Megan Fudge, very quality singles player as well. So I, I know that both Megan Fudge and Yana Newell were in the challenger bracket, which is somewhat questionable anyway because they're both very, very good. But they are both clear-cut premier singles player, no question whatsoever. How much stock in the drafted teams put this this particular season after what you learned in season one into that Dream Breaker singles part of the MLP format? Certainly some more than others. How much and, did you put on? Uh, it's, it's not really factor. Less than most. We'll, okay. we'll we'll say that much. I've had a couple pretty lengthy conversations with uh, you know co-GM Tim Parks of the Hard Eights, and uh, you know we did a little, or he did some advanced math, <laughs> <laughs> and we kind. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of broke it There's down. There's no INT, and, Adam. And yes, and, and the impact that you have in the Dream Breaker is so significantly less than doubles that uh, I do believe it is less important than what the consensus thinks. And there's, you know, there's some players that are significantly worse in singles and could possibly, you know, uh, uh, you know, bring that whole squad of four down. But as long as it, you, you don't have a real hole and they're competent in that field, then I, I think that you you draft those quality doubles players and uh, that Dream Breaker, it's, it's, it is all over the place. Uh, on paper matters, but it, matter, it seems to matter less in the Dream Breaker than it does in some of the other matchups. Yeah. That is factual. All right, so looks like we're closer to a verdict. Yeah, and that's... After reviewing the official rule book, that's Brooks Wiley calling over both GMs on the side of the aces and the sliders. And from that reaction, the Brooklyn Aces don't seem too pleased. Lots of talking with the hands there. <laughs> yes. Quite the delay. Yeah, and I mean, for the actual incident and then kind of the fallout from it, 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 this is going to be a huge factor for all eight players involved. Hopefully they just make a decision and move on with it at this point. The rules are the rules. Like them, hate them, everyone has to play by them. Commit to it and move on. Even if you're the aces, you gotta, you gotta play the best to beat the best, right? Yeah, so I, I can just right. I, I can only see the conversation. I can't hear it. And I think Yana Newell is going to be playing from what I saw, not heard. So. If you're on the Aces team right now and your GM is fired up, your teammates are fired up, everybody's upset about the rule, whether it's valid or not, how do you regroup mentally and not become a victim of the situation? You got you got to have that tunnel vision, task at hand. We, we have eight professionals out here playing, I promise you that. So if anyone is equipped to move past this and lock in on the task at hand, it's these players on the court. Hayden Patrickwin is the first matchup for the Aces, taking on J.W. Johnson. If you're new to the Dream Breaker, I'll explain the format in just a moment. Colin Johns. And Ooh. Catherine Parento is the response for the Aces. Clapping in the booth. I like the girls versus the guys. It's fun, different dynamic. Megan Fudge out next for the sliders. Tyler 
Bloom is the matchup there. Okay, but if we remember that dream breaker in Atlanta, Adam, you were a part of this. Megan Fudge asked to be matched up. Oh, maybe it was the semis. She asked to be matched up against a guy. Mm -hmm. She gets fired up by that. Yeah, I know there's multiple ladies that like playing the guys. Just be, it could fire them up or it could take a little pressure off as well. So we've seen these matchups so many times in Dream Breakers and I think it's much more exciting when we get the mixes of genders playing each other. Yeah, Dazan is in. So it is Megan Dazan that will be playing in this one. I'm, st I'm, st I'm sticking. This, this is very close to me. I think this is a push. If there was a betting line on this Dream Breaker, I think it's very close to a push. How do you feel if you're Megan Dazan at this point? <laughs> I, 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 I do not know. I, I'm not sure I've ever had a concussion or anything no, close to it. No, but just like the distraction of the surrounding you and just everything. Yes, it, it's a lot. It's a lot. And I, and I know <laughs> I talked about that these players are professionals and only get through it. But it, it, let's be clear, it's not easy given uh, the sequence of events leading up to this. Here's the, the Dream Breaker presented by Toyota Prius. J.W. Johnson and Patrick Quinn out for four points. Nice low return from Hayden Patrickwin, forcing J.W. Johnson to hit up on that pass attempt. There's J.W. Johnson. Yeah, great return set up that whole point. And when he has a sitter forehand in an open court, it's over. Nice into the net for J.W. Johnson. Patrick Quinn on top 2-1 in the sequence. And a missed return into the net for J.W. Johnson. Yeah, definitely not having his normal feel uh, throughout this match, but he's gonna get another crack or two in the stream breaker. Wide for Catherine Parento oh, that gets Colin Johns. That was almost oh. that was almost a lot of trouble for Colin, <laughs> but caught the tape. Two, three. Yeah, and I would expect Colin, of course, he's going to mix some drops and some drives, but when he was playing full-time singles, he was very adept at cat and mouse dink and dunk singles play. Four, two. Just wide for Parento. What do you mean by dink and dunk? Yeah, just the cat and mouse, where you're not just hitting big serves, returns, and just driving every single ball. You're actually getting to the kitchen and playing some dink rallies and softer, slower shots. Colin Johns finds the sideline. A 3-1 split for him. Yeah, great court coverage from Colin because that cross-court volley to the open court from Catherine was not a poor one. Out comes Megan Fudge and Tyler Liu. Battle of the ladies against the guys. Ooh, Megan Fudge goes big, sends it long. Liu gets the first point. Yeah, those shorter, shorter, lower returns are very difficult to drive. Clean winner on the line. Lou got it, I think. Oh my God, I think that, she caught it. No, that looked out to me. So Fudge is going to call it out. Yeah. And I, I don't have the best of you, but in real time, I did think it was wide. He'll accept it. So he must have seen it wide as well. 1-1. One, one. Just wide for Fudge. Oh, he was a little fortunate there, Tyler Loon. Yeah, he was beat. He, yeah, he kind of patty caked that put away volley. Even though I love his return, deep to the middle of the court, 
using his wingspan and athleticism tough for Megan Fudge to pass him. spot against one of, the, one of the fastest players on tour. Megan Fudge, well done. Out comes Megan Dazan against Andrea Coop for four. And Megan Dazan finds the angle on the run, looking to be the hero of her team. I just love it when those passing shots are hovering and you know the player receiving it can't get there. Everyone just kind of holds their breath. Is it going to drop or not? Kitchen. Yeah, and one of the biggest issues for the ladies up at the kitchen is just the length, but Megan Dazan has that length and the wingspan to cover. Yeah. Megan Dazan throws a cannon to put her team on top by one. Oh my God, it was a rocket. <laughs> Nothing Andrea Coop can do. No chance for her after that forehand from Dazan. What? Nerves of steel. Yeah, what play those four points after what she has been through. Jada B. Johnson comes out against Patrick Quinn and a passing shot. His team needs him. So good. Great return from Hayden Patrick Quinn and somehow J.W. Johnson is able to get that forehand cross court. from Hayden Patrick Quinn countering. Yeah, he kind of went with an educated guess there, leaning over to his right, expecting a forehand, and he got it. Good return from J.W. Johnson. Yeah, just, you know, first, first shot or two of the point in doubles is very big, but even bigger in singles. So many of the, these points are shorter. Serve, return, first volley, and, and of course third shot drive, all just absolutely paramount in the game of singles. Sliders reach 11 points first, so we will take the end change. One more point to play in this sequence with J.W. Johnson and Hayden Patrickwin. Megan Dazan, what a warrior she is, gets slapped in the back of the head with a paddle, continues to play while... Yeah, and she gave a little smile there. She was talking with Megan Fudge, the Megans over there on the sideline, so nice to she see her show a little smile and her a little back and forth chat with the ladies. Even Yana Newell on the sideline supporting her almost team. <laughs> Yeah, that return right on the sideline. A 2-2 split for J.W. Johnson and Hayden Patrickwin. So Colin Johns and Catherine Parento back out for four. Yeah. CP has wheels for days. Yeah, she's so good at that little slide too. So she's mid-slide when she hits that ball. The con paddle control that she has and the balance is so good. Yeah, and I really like I really like the high, deep returns to the middle from the fellas. They are kind of saying, if you can pass me, you can, but I'm not going to give you the angle to do it. Mm. Oh, Colin John sinks it in. That was, the first ball was incredible for Colin because Catherine cannot hit a better return than she did. 2-1. Colin Johns is up a point. One more to go. away with three. 
Yeah, it's great coverage of the kitchen. You know, never ending the point or doing an incredible things with the volley, but they were all solid. They were all put back into play in a good position. This was a split series in their first encounter. Yeah. What a shot from Loom. Yeah, we got to find a name for that when they're losing the balance at the kitchen and they wave their arms. I'm, I'm not sure what to call it, but good balance from Tyler either way. Yeah. Megan Fudge takes one. Oh, tough break for Tyler Loom. I don't think anyone would have been home had that ball gone over, but it does not. yell from the crowd one more she didn't like that yeah I saw her glance over after that oh somebody's getting scolded in the crowd Tyler Loon passes fudge and gets a 3-1 edge in that series out comes Megan Design it was 3-1 in her favor against Andrea Coop in round one here's round two Yeah, I, and I, <laughs> I like these players very equally, but it's hard not to pull for Megan Dazan right now a little bit given what has happened. It's the first. Yeah, you don't you don't really see those extended dink rallies too frequently in women's singles, but we saw it there. Nice touch and feel from both ladies. Megan Design buries the second. Columbus 17 13 is the score still two more points to be played in this rotation hats off to Megan design to be performing at this level with all the distraction with likely your head killing you at this point as close as we could ask it to be a four-point lead for the sliders can they hang on to close it that is the question this is Major League Pickleball. Such a big point coming out of this timeout. Yeah, what do you... Can you squeeze it to three points or does it extend to five in the latter stages of this Dream Breaker? Massive point. Mentality is just in and work the corners. Uh, you, just, you just keep on keeping on. Do what got you here. Let it fly. Into the net goes Dazan with a twirl to match. Coop gets one. One more point to go. And a great return from Andrea. 14, 17. Oh, Coop pulls it out. A 2 2 split. That's huge. Yeah, there's that 1 2 combination. Another two-point gap continues. Patrick Quinn and Johnson out for more. They split last round. JW Johnson grabs the angle. Yeah, tough break. I think when that clipped the tape, tape it almost took off, which is a very unusual situation when it does clip the tape. The backspin of JW Johnson created that. Into the net for Johnson. Yeah, didn't quite clear his body. I like him stepping over and looking to take as many forehands as possible after he serves, but you have to have the footwork to match. Patrick 
Quinn hits a clean winner on J.W. Johnson. for Patrick Quinn, two and two. Colin Johns back out. 19-17. Yeah. Nice return from Catherine Parento, keeping Colin Johns back into the court, not allowing him to step into a shot. Oh, a missed return for Colin Johns. Tie game. Catherine Parento ties it 19 all. 19, 19. Yeah. Catherine Parento gets the passing shot in game match point. Unbelievable angle from CP. All eyes on Colin Johns. Can he tie it here? 2019. Colin Johns keeps his team alive. What a rotation. Megan Fudge against Tyler Liu. Last rotation, Tyler got three of the four. Can Megan, John, Megan Fudge pull it out? into the net. Tyler Loon looking to close it out. Let's see if Tyler Loon can find a forehand pass after this serve to seal the deal. Megan Fudge stays alive. Great first volley from Megan Fudge. 1-1. Two more points to go. A split would be huge. Yes, a split is a win, no question. 21-21. Yeah. Megan Fudge hits the passing shot. <laughs> Match point. Columbus Sliders, Megan Fudge was a late add to this team. She wanted it. Oh, she took a rip. I love it. You got to go for your shot. She hits a very good deep serve and has a nice look at a two-hand backhand. Didn't work out, but I just love what I'm seeing for Megan Fudge. Four more points between Dazan and Coop. Megan Dazan could close it out. What a poetic finish. Andrea Coop buries it down the line brings match point to their side. Andrea Coop finishes the match on her paddle down the line. Clean winner and the Brooklyn Aces advance to the semifinals. Incredible match. There's really just nothing else to say. Uh, it had a little bit of everything and my goodness, great job by the Aces to stay focused after a couple extended breaks and a fantastic fight from the Columbus Sliders. What a battle. It's what MLP is all about. All right, we're gonna take a quick commercial break and we will be back to talk with the Brooklyn Aces, the winner of our first quarterfinal match. Major League Pickleball by Margaritaville is brought to you by Hospital for Special Surgery, proud to be the official hospital of Major League Pickleball. Toyota Prius, it's ace now. Pro XR Pickleball, 
Innovation you can handle. Duper. Innovate the game. Unify the sport. At the botanist, we always look further, seeing potential where others may not. We sustainably hand forage 22 Isla Botanicals to make a beautifully balanced gin, capturing the essence of our Scottish island home, consciously crafted by our community to be enjoyed by yours. Look further. It's all up to me. Nothing can get in my way. And when they ask, what are you gonna do next? I'll say, I'm going. We're going to Margaritaville. You can go to Margaritaville too. Visit margaritavilleresorts.com. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. Back on championship court here for MLP Dallas. The Brooklyn Aces just stole this one in a dream breaker in the most dramatic fashion possible. So we start with you, Andrea Coop. The match was on your paddle. What was your mentality, the final two points? Well, I got to say the match was only on my paddle because all of my teammates put it there. Uh, we got 22 points before that. It was a great team effort. But once I had the ball back, I was just coming to play big, big pickleball, just going, trying to hit winners. Honestly, that was my mentality after Samin called the timeout. Just like singles is not something I do every day, so just swing. A gutsy call there for the team to go gal against guy. You had Colin Johns, you sparked the run because the score was 17-19. You got three points to put your team back in a winning situation. What was your mentality and why did you choose to match up against Colin? Well, I just told myself, hey, we're going to lose this. We got to go and just try to win it. You know, you cannot be scared at this point. It's nine, you're down 19-17. You can't be scared to just go make your shots. And uh, I was just happy to get to 20 and uh, so happy for, I mean, can, couldn't be any more proud for my teammates. I was crazy. I don't even know what to say right now just no words to describe this well everyone was clutch too including you Hayden going up against JW Johnson what kind of confidence does this kind of grindy win do for you and your teammates uh, just pumps us up for sure Coop's the MVP she played great um, we got to play at 8 a.m. tomorrow Christian Alshon we're coming for you <laughs> well perfect segue then for Tyler Lou you have DC pickleball team tomorrow at 8 a.m. in the semis What's this mentality for the Brooklyn Aces heading into that one? Yeah, certainly. I wonder if they can push that back. I don't know why it's so <laughs> early. Um, this will be our earliest match, so the ball's going to be a little bit colder. Uh, we're going to need to make sure to bring the energy from the beginning. Why do you believe, Andrea, that this team can win that match? Tomorrow, uh, Kawamoto's are some of my best friends in pickleball. I practice with them a lot, so there's no secrets with any of us, at least in women's doubles, I don't think. Uh, it'll be a great match, but I believe in this team. Uh, we're 2-0 we're oh in Dream Breakers. We're the Dream Breaker team. The Dream Breaker team, look out for the Brooklyn Aces. We're going to step aside for just a moment, but don't go away. We've got one more quarterfinal match coming your way next. It's Ben Johns and the Chicago Slice taking on the Miami Pickleball Club. We'll be right back.